Now there is one defining feature that has made the Mazda MX-5 the world's most popular sports car, and that is because it's fun. Now fun comes in all different shapes and sizes for this fan group, and we've come here to Laguna Seca in California, just days after the latest ND model was released. And we're going to drive the first three generations, and we're here at the annual fan meet to see why this car is such an icon. The fourth generation MX-5 was revealed in Monterey, California last week, complete with a set from 80s pop icons Duran Duran. And it takes the concept back to its original roots as a lightweight ragtop roadster. What it doesn't do, like the previous two generations, is simply try and mimic the design of the original, with a bold new style wrapped around its smaller body. While we haven't had the chance to drive it yet, we did get the opportunity to get behind the wheel of the first three generations of the MX-5 while in Monterey. First up, the original MX-5 reignited a love affair for lightweight affordable sports cars when it was released in 1989. It had blatantly tried to rekindle the spirit of 1960s British convertibles such as the MGB and Triumph TR4 and was a refreshing change after a generation of overweight, overpowered muscle cars. So this is where the legend all started. It's the original, original MX-5. This is the 1.6 litre 1989 model and it is bog basic. It is all you need in a sports car. It feels light, there's not much into the interior, but all the things that you really want to touch and feel are all there. The steering is just absolutely gorgeous. For this age of car, it's got so much uh, point and poise, and then the gearbox, it's like nickety snick. But I'd have to say this 1.6 litre engine did feel a little bit underpowered. It doesn't have quite the revvy nature of the latest generation ones, but I can see what the appeal was for this car at the time. And the way it handles, it's got this nice sort of gentle roll to it but there's plenty of grip and it's just it's like the Toyota 86 of its time completely playful and just really full of character there's no wonder this car became an icon from the moment it hit showrooms it took Mazda almost a decade to completely update the MX-5 with a second generation NB model moving it with the times it was bigger more powerful more luxurious and came with features such as a six-speed gearbox and anti-skid brakes for the first time but it also introduced a new look that didn't include the pop-up headlights of the original. Now you can immediately feel that there was a lift in sort of the presence of the interior. This one has got a silver dash, a bit more of a bigger stereo system, and there's a little bit more space in the cabin. Now the thing about the first generation MX-5 was it was always planned to be a small engine, lightweight roadster. However, there was some criticism from enthusiasts that always wanted a bit more power. And in Australia, Alan Horsley and the Mazda Australia team decided to do that with the SP version. And it inspired this car, which is a little bit special. It's the Mazda Speed MX-5. And this was developed in America with a turbocharged engine similar to that SP in Australia. And you can immediately feel it's a bit more lively than the standard car. While the throttle response isn't actually as sharp because it's got a bit of turbo lag, it takes a little bit of time to build up pressure but once it comes on strong, it is a hell of a lot more faster and a lot more quicker than the standard MX-5. The thing about it is it doesn't terribly overpower the chassis. The thing is still really fun and agile to drive, great steering, and you know it's just a great fun road car, this. The current NC MX-5 arrived in 2005 with a cheeky new look and continued the trend of its predecessor in moving more upmarket and gaining a few kilos. It also came with a metal folding hardtop for the first time and lost some of its appeal amongst hardcore enthusiasts. And this is the MX-5 that we've got today. And it is still a great fun little car. It has all the hallmarks of the original but has grown a bit in size, weight and a little bit more luxurious than the first one. Now it's still got all the hallmarks we love about the original despite that increase in size and weight. It still feels really agile to drive. The steering is really sharp and it'll be the last one with hydraulic power steering. The new one getting electrics. Looking at the MX-5 in the face of competition from the likes of the Toyota 86 and the Subaru BRZ which have really come on strong for this small affordable sports car category, the MX-5 does feel a little bit soft and a little bit old school. 
Now the engine's still got that raspy, revvy nature to it, and the gearbox is slick and really mechanical. And there is nothing better than driving with the wind in your hair. And this one is the car that was released to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the MX-5. Now there's nothing new about it in terms of its mechanical underpinnings, but in terms of design, it's got some unique features in terms of this new red paint scheme, white leather interior, and these cars literally sold out within about 10 minutes over here in the US. Now Australia's getting a small handful of these cars as well, which have already been sold out too. Mazda is hoping the new MX-5 regains some of that enthusiast audience, which was evident among the gathering of fanatics at Laguna Seca, where more than 2,000 cars turned up to create a new world record for the number of MX-5s in one place. While the majority of cars were all original, there were also plenty of cars you wouldn't even recognise started life as one of the Japanese roadsters. There was everything from stripped out racers, V8 powered giant killers, retro fastbacks, modern chop roof speedsters that looked like the baby Aston Martin, and even a couple that took the minimalist concept to new levels. As you'd expect from a group of hardcore fans, there was also a number of equally colourful characters among the crowd. All of the owners got the chance to unleash their machines on the challenging Laguna Seca circuit, some even pushing them beyond their limits. And so did I, slipping behind the wheel of a stripped out MX-5 Cup car for a few laps with the Skip Barber Race School. And I'd have to say that while the MX-5 isn't the quickest thing I've driven around the circuit, dropping off the legendary corkscrew corner in any machine is a massive thrill. More than anything though, the Laguna Seca fan meet proved that no matter how wild or mild an MX-5 is, or even how old it is, there is still plenty to love about and plenty of love for the legendary little roadster.